next is data confidentiality so in this we will understand like it's a similar to integrity like similar type of solutions we implement as encryption uh, we heard that in integrity we have to implement encryption and encryption also provides uh, data confidentiality so uh, requirement is that to ensure the confidentiality of the information on communication channels and in data repositories to prevent unauthorized disclosure so we need to uh, put confidentiality measures that it cannot be accessed by it cannot disclose something so let us suppose you have a pdf file and, and it has some report and you don't want to you want to keep it at a shared location but you don't want to make it exposed for everyone so you can uh, uh, lock that file with some username and password so then whosoever will have the username and credentials then he can only access and read that information so in that case what will happen that data you can keep it at a shared location but it will not be uh, exposed to everyone so yeah, that is one of the examples other other examples like if you if you receive your bank statements or your stock holdings that those files are secured by a username password uh, that is only known to you so those things are major to maintain the data confidentiality so first thing here uh, comes is that the data classification or the file classification so in most of the companies you'll find the uh, files folders programs all those are classified into like confidential non-confidential public uh, internal so there are several classifiers uh, out available there for classifying the types of the documents so let us suppose if uh, it's a patent it, it will be a trade secret it could be a very highly confidential if it is a financial information that could be a confidential information but if it is a flyer or advertisement of the company that could be a public document so we need to first classify our document that whether it is a confidential document or whether it is an internal so after classification then we can find out those documents or those programs or those areas even and then we can put a proper cyber security control to maintain that thing so uh, our standard says that to ensure the confidentiality of the information on communication channels as well and in data repository so it is also talking about the data in transit and data in rest to prevent unauthorized disclosure now uh, what some measures we can implement so first could be like enable users to verify that the sensitive information is communicated using secure encrypted protocol and cipher suites so if a user who is communicating uh, over the untrusted network that communication must be secure so let us suppose if third party is accessing the uh, terminal server in the dmz of your plan then that communication must be through a secure channel that that could be we can use a vpn tunnel with dual factor authentication so that could be one of the solutions for that so wherever uh, if there is a sensitive information coming through the mail we can um, encrypt it with using the pki so some organization uses that also that they encrypt email communication also while sending it through the, the untrusted network and that is the internet users should receive real time alerts if insecure protocols are used in exchange sen sensitive information so let us suppose if uh, if the file is classified as uh, confidential and we are sharing it through the uh, without encryption to someone on 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 a inside a plant also or outside a plant also then in that cases we should uh, put some system which can analyze that what type of data this user is sharing on this network and in case if that is defying the policies whatever we have said that we have to send always like in uh, previously we say that we have to send all the sensitive information using a secure encrypted protocol but if user is defying this policy then in that case a real time alert should be raised and it should be uh, sent to the concerning stakeholders and then the next action or next control we can put in that system the alerts include information about the source and destination of the devices so uh, the alert which uh, uh, will be raised for the previous incident that should contain source and destination like from which uh, source to what source it, it has been sent whether it is uploaded to google drive or whether uh, it is sent through mail to someone or it's uh, just uh, like uh, upload to some box drive or box folder so that the remediation actions can be taken example if insecure version of ssl can be disabled on the host so let us suppose if as insecure version of ssl is there on the host device from where this data was exfiltrated or tried to get exfiltrated then we can disable that host we and this version can be disabled that host or otherwise what we can do we can suspend that account we can lock that account remotely we can 
uh, take proper measure we can withdraw privileges from active directly so this type of actions we can take to uh, prevent this data exfiltration otherwise there are uh, many other solutions also let's move uh, to deep dive into this topic so what we can do so where uh, basically we have the six methods what we can implement to ensure the data confidentiality so let's go one by one so first is the restrict access to data first we need to restrict the access to data so access control should always be based on the principle of least privilege like no not everyone should have the authority to change that file or update that file or edit that file alter that file or or content of that data so it should have the least privilege like read only see only that that type of privilege we need to give which means that you should only grant access to the data on need to know basis any data should not be open to everyone so if someone is from the financial background he should not have access to the plant uh, plc programs or, or similar uh, vice versa so if it if someone has a engineering uh, access he should not have the network admin access or he should not do any changes in the network if someone is a network administrator he should not have rights to do anything on the active directory so uh, if uh, operator should not have uh, permit or access to change the program or alter the logic so this is called restrict access to data and it should go through the least privilege which means that you should know only uh, grant access to the data on a need to know basis then uh, moving ahead uh, encrypt your data so one of the best ways to protect data confidentiality is encryption because uh, all these encryption protocols or algorithm work on a forward principle like let us suppose uh, if it is a sum of 1000 so there there are many ways to uh, get a sum of 1000 it could be 500 plus 500 can come to 1000 it could be 999 plus 1 is also 1000 998 plus 2 is also 1000 so this is like that so once we encrypt that that mathematical calculation cannot be reversed back it, it will take ages to reverse it back to find the exact sum or exact code what was prepared uh, what was uh, constructed while encrypting that data so it's very tough to decrypt and nowadays uh, going around 128 byte encryption 256 8 bit uh, encryption so that is uh, again very cumbersome and it will need huge resources and compute power to do the reverse calculation of that encrypted data so simply put encryption is a process that uses an algorithm to turn data into unreadable format so if your data is in unreadable format it cannot be of, of use by the adversary so only authorized people can decrypt the data and read it so only authorized people how can they decrypt either they will use a symmetric key or they will use a private key to decrypt that data to read it so this is one of the best way to protect the encryption of the data so nowadays if you go and buy some nas drives or sand drives so they also have the functionalities for data encryption address so they will maintain the integrity and confidentiality by using the encryption algorithms moving ahead uh, implement a confidentiality policy so policy if we are setting up a policy it is acting as a deterrence so we should write the policy and uh, a confidentiality policy includes instructions on the how employee should handle confidential uh, data to ensure its protection so if something comes into the policy then employees uh, it will be a legal bound by uh, to the employee to follow the policies or procedures whatever is uh, written in that policy so if it is written that confidential data must be sent through an encrypted mail then uh, everyone has to abide that policy if someone is not abiding them then the alerts will be raised as, as we discussed earlier that if something is uh, sensitive data and it is not sent over the encrypted channel then alerts will be raised and it will be identified and proper remediation measures can be taken so implementation of confidential policy is another uh, mechanism now moving next is the implemented data retention policy so data retention policy makes it easier for employees to understand that what data they need to store and how long and also how to safely dispose of data when no longer necessary so let's take an example in a plant environment logs log generation will be in the amount of the tbs terabytes so if we uh, start keeping everything all the logs then uh, you will need a very huge storage it could go to like thousand terabytes or might be more than that 
so we need to make a retention policy so shall we need a 90 days retention policy or are we going to store only critical logs on and only for one year so that that is the retention policy or are we going to keep everything for five years or 10 years or 20 years as per the requirement if it is a process performance data if it is a health record data then we need to keep it for the longer period as per the life cycle of the plant as well as the life cycle of uh, process whatever is in place so we need to make a retention policy based on our business requirements as well as our process so this type of uh, policy we need to create and then also we need to create a disposable uh, policy of the data like when, when to dispose the data uh, if a task is done if, if the uses of that data is done let us suppose we use sometimes uh, some training data to train our machine learning algorithm so once that training is done and process is running in uh, smooth, we can archive that or we can even uh, dispose of those data also. So one more uh, principle is that in upgrade of technology. So let us suppose we earlier we were storing all our data in CD and DVD drives and now SSD and NAS and SAN, all those drives are in picture. So we need to break and we need to destroy all our data, whatever was written on that CD, DVD or those tape drives. Now we need to move all those data on this latest storage devices and then we can destroy that data what was uh, stored earlier and uh, obsolete technologies. So that is one thing. Next moving ahead is the develop and implement a cyber security program. So cyber security program provides a comprehensive overview of your company's electronic data and risk it faces. So whatever cyber security program you have, it should have a section which deals about the electronic data and risk associated with it and how to adhere or how to manage those risks related to the data security most importantly it includes all the measures you should take to ensure confidentiality availability and integrity of the data whatever type of the data it is then uh, take physical security measures so this is not last but uh, it is it is quite important to ensure physical security this is the first line of de defense of any uh, industrial control systems. So protecting your data against cyber threats is not enough. You should also safeguard it against physical threats such as theft also. So you should not put your NAS drives or uh, hard disk or the pen drives at such a location and such a situation that it can be stolen, stolen from that place. So this can be done by using an office alarm system, locking up paper based confidential documents, files, installing surveillance cameras and, and other solutions also. Uh, like entry exit monitoring we need to give physical controls card access so all those types of control physical controls also we need to keep so that we can uh, ensure that all the data whatever we have kept this is kept in a uh, complete supervision and it, it is safe at that place so that's all about data confidentiality hope it clarified you it make you understand like what is data confidentiality in terms of industrial control system let's move to the next chapter